Meanwhile, let's check in with Ellery McCardle, who's live in Mobile 11 this morning. Ellery, are the conditions improving at all this morning? Uh, not really, Alicia, not since we last talked in the last hour or so. But yeah, we've seen a lot of snow plows out on those side streets, which is definitely needed. So right now we're in Burnsville and you can see as we're turning around this corner that we are uh, fishtailing and sliding because there's a lot of compacted snow and ice on these side streets. As you were showing, the highways for the most part look fine. But since we got down to the Apple Valley and Burnsville area, there's a lot more snow, it seems, on those side streets that had a lot of people kind of spinning around. We haven't seen any crashes or people in the ditch at all down here, so that's good news, but just something to keep in mind. Those side streets are a mess today. All right, thanks for that look from Mobile 11, Ellery. Keeping an eye on roads and the river. This morning, people in the Anoka area are on standby for possible flooding. It's because of a massive ice jam on the Mississippi River. That's right. Kai Edwards continues our team coverage. And Kaya, what does the river look like right now? Good morning. You can see those white chunks of ice behind me there and the water is high. In fact, it surged eight feet in only 24 hours. So a lot of people have been stopping by here to check it out. And one neighbor showed us not just big chunks of ice, but also even an uprooted tree next to his boathouse. That piece of ice is uh, it's got a footprint that's got a profile as uh, uh, big as a small car. The people on the river that I delivered to her worried about their homes. So. Check out this incredible drone video showing the magnitude of this. The National Weather Service says water levels are expected to slowly drop over the next few days. However, ice jams are so unpredictable, and so it's possible the ice jam could break. And so for now, a flood warning is in effect for this area, and the city is preparing for the worst. It has sand, sandbags on standby, and yesterday, Anoka police closed parks and trails. So we will continue to watch out for those water levels rising, and hopefully, though, no flooding. Back to you. Thanks for that update and to stay up to date with any weather and traffic, be sure to follow us on social media and download the Care 11 app. Breaking overnight, arrests have been made in the deadly plane crash in Iran. 176 people died after Iran said its Revolutionary Guard shot the Ukrainian plane down by mistake. The admission has sparked a sense of outrage and grief. People are wondering why this wasn't told to them earlier and why all along authorities in this country had been denying any responsibility. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. A school bus driver is being praised for his quick actions to save all the kids on his bus. The bus was carrying a seventh grade basketball team from Richfield when it caught fire on 494 in Maplewood. The school said the 18 year veteran driver was able to get all the kids off the bus safely. Right now it's unclear what caused the fire. Tonight, President Trump is set to hold a Keep America Great rally in Milwaukee. The event will be going on at the same time as the seventh Democratic presidential debate. Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar is one of six candidates who made the cut. Our John Croman is in Des Moines and we'll have a preview next half hour. Snowplow drivers for St. Louis County have turned down a final contract offer citing issues over health care and sick leave. This sets the stage for a strike as early as this morning. If it happens, the county says supervisors and other employees are licensed to drive plows. The Minnesota DNR is trying to get kids outdoors more often through a grant program. No Child Left Inside helps fund school-based outdoor sports such as skiing, fishing, even hunting. They say this will help teach kids about environmental stewardship. The DNR says there's been huge support from schools across the state receiving hundreds of applicants. And that's your Tuesday Morning Rush. Chris, thank you. Well, the TSA tends to get a bad rap, but this time a local indigenous woman says an MSP agent just went too far. Her tweet complaint already has hundreds of shares, and it's one of our most talked about stories this morning. So we're explaining more about what happened to her in our digital dive. Tara Hauska, a prominent attorney and indigenous activist, says an agent pulled her braids, laughed, and said giddy up as she went through security at MSP's Terminal 1. She said she felt angry and humiliated and that she's proud of her hair as a native woman. When you casually use authority to um, be disrespectful to other people, um, you know, that is part of a whole systemic problem. 
The TSA is investigating the incident and says it's reviewing security footage, footage as the agency tells us they will take appropriate action should an investigation substantiate the traveler's allegation. Hauska doesn't want the employee to be fired, but she just wants that employee to have a little bit more training. Now, MSP Airport apologized in this tweet, saying in part, we are so sorry to hear about your experience here, and we'll send this tweet along to the TSA leadership for a followed up. They go on to say we'd also be happy to file a formal complaint on your behalf. And as I mentioned, this was one of the biggest conversations happening on our Care 11 Facebook page. A few of you even told us that you also had questionable encounters with TSA agents. We have this comment here from Pam saying, I 100% agree with her that employee needs training, not firing. It's not hard to hate ignorance and want vengeance, but she's above that. And she goes on to say, I commend and support Tara. And then this comment from Jamie saying, reading these comments is disturbing. The white privilege is suffocating it's quite easy to see how this woman was the victim of bigotry and racism. Both are all over these comments as well. So do better people. And uh, many people said they wanted to wait for the investigation to be finished before they make any judgments about this particular case. You can read more about it right now at care11.com. Now, Tara is actually coming uh, back from D.C., you guys. She was at a climate change uh, where mm -hmm. Joaquin Phoenix was there, Jane right. Fonda was there, and she was fighting for indigenous rights mm. in D.C. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she is, you know, if, if this had, if this ha happened, um, it's so wrong and so disturbing and people should be angry about this. So um, let's see how this investigation unfolds. Yeah, and I like how she's going about it. I think she's going about it the right way, asking for more education mm -hmm. and not just for not the person fire. to be fired, which, yeah. you know, everybody right away these days is like fire, fire, right fire. Home. So I like the way she's uh, approached this. Sven, what's our one thing weather today? Well, we're looking at uh, falling temperatures, but a mild start. So your weight at the bus stop, pretty nice, 32 degrees out there. Uh, but by the afternoon, we're in the low 20s with sunshine, but it is going to be cooler. And this is the biggest slowdown of the morning. If you take 35 east southbound through Vadness Heights, usually this is the traffic you're going to be sitting in. This is near County Road 96, a crash blocking the right shoulder in that area. Like I mentioned, that is the biggest slowdown so far this morning. So if you haven't left yet and you're coming from the White Bear area, Highway 61 is looking like a much faster option. New developments on the royal drama. What the Queen says about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's plan to move to Canada. World Series champs not playing on a level playing field. The investigation that's costing the Houston Astros millions of dollars. Then gaining weight, feeling cold. It's more than just the side effects on winter. The underlying condition you could be living with. 